Hello everyone. In this video, you will learn how to pull data from a JDBC source using Python PySpark incrementally. In this, we are going to leverage a primary key of the source table, which is usually an auto incrementing key. We're going to leverage that and only pull incremental data. With this approach, you're not pulling the entire data set. Instead, you're only pulling new data that has been added. This can really save a lot of time and resources. So let's get started with the video. So the first step in the project is we need a source database where we can pull the data incrementally. For the demo purposes, we're going to use PostgreSQL. Uh, don't worry, you can uh, basically uh, spin up a Postgres using a Docker file that I'm going to give you. So let's take a look at that. So here is a very simple Docker Compose file. As you can see, I am using Postgres 13 and the username is Postgres, the password is Postgres and the database is Postgres. So let's basically uh, start our uh, Postgres uh, on a Docker container. So coming to your project directory, now start the command by saying docker compose up hyphen hyphen build. This will essentially start the Postgres uh, database on Docker. Now that you have your Docker running Postgres, now you'll be given a Python file called ingest.py. Simply run the Python file. This Python file will create a Postgres table called sales where there will be a column called sales ID, which is going to auto increment. And then we are going to essentially per, uh, insert some fake data into the table. So let's do that part. So I'm going to run the Python file in just.py. And uh, we, this Python file will insert some data coming to Postgres. Now if I uh, do select star from public dot sales, and here you can see we do have some fake data. And here you can see uh, we have a sales ID, which is an auto increment key, as you can see. And basically we have some fake data. So now that you have some data in Postgres table, let's take a look at the PySpark template, which is used to pull data incrementally. Uh, so let's take a look at that. On line number eight to line number 23, we have defined a bunch of imports. Then I have a main function on line number 26. We are using a package called Postgres SQL. Right. On line number 31 and 32, we are creating a Spark session. Line 35 to line 39, we are declaring all the uh, variables. For example, since I'm using Postgres on a Docker Compose, so again, my URL is localhost colon 5432. Table name is public.sales. We have populated the table with some fake data, right? Here you can see. Username as Postgres, password as Postgres, PK is sales ID. That's the column which is auto incrementing. Now, what is the logic? So basically, first we try to see if we do have a checkpoint. If we do not have a checkpoint, for the first time, I want to read the entire data set. Once I am done basically reading the entire data set, I'm going to commit the last pointer in the data set uh, basically a checkpoint, right? So next time when I start, I start from that particular pointer. So let's take a look at the logic. Over here, we declare max ID checkpoint directory. This is the directory where the checkpoint would be saved. So here we check if we do have a checkpoint, if we have the checkpoint load the max ID, right? So max ID basically means the last ID for example, here is 400, right? So that would be essentially loaded. So next time when the new data is added, the, the new ID would be 401, 402, 403. So the query will essentially start after 400. So basically you're pulling incremental data. So line 43, we check if the checkpoint exists. If the checkpoint exists, load the max ID. If the checkpoint does not exist, which means you're running the script for the first time, load everything, which means max ID is zero as you can see. Now here is the query, select everything from the table name where PK is greater than max ID. So here we're gonna say where sales ID is greater than zero. So we're gonna pull everything. Here is the Spark syntax or the code, which is used to pull the data in a, in a PySpark data frame. Here you can see on line 53, spark.read.format, JDBC. We provide the URL, we provide the query, username, password, and the driver. Then it's pretty straightforward. On line number 62, we check if the count is greater than zero. If the count is greater than zero, um, you know, which means you have data. Now we are gonna commit the last pointer on the checkpoint. 
Um, again, if you don't have data, that means nothing to process. So the code is pretty straightforward. Let's see this in action so it does make sense. It's showtime. Let's see things in action. That's how we learn and uh, uh, understand things better. So I have copy pasted the entire code in my Jupyter notebook, the code that I just essentially explained. Now, before I run the code, I want to explain you. So when I run the code for the first time, I should see all the data set. And in the checkpoint folder, I would see the last maximum uh, uh, ID would be maybe 400, 500. When I execute it once again, I should not see data because I have already processed that data. Then when I enter some new data and I again run the template, I should see the data coming in. Let's see all that in action, right? All right, so I'm gonna run the code for the first time. Again, observe I do not have any folder. Uh, let me just make sure I show you. I do not have any folder called checkpoints in the directory, okay? So I'm gonna run this for the first time. So as you can see, checkpoint not found starting from scratch. So now it's gonna perform the query and then it's gonna print the PySpark data frame and then it's gonna store the max ID in the checkpoint. Here you can see the max ID is 400, right? Uh, it is still running. So I'm gonna wait, yep, it's still running. And here you can see we essentially have pulled all the data from um, Postgres, right? If I, if I show you the last pointer is 400, right? So which means I have successfully processed my data. If I run the template again, it's gonna load from the checkpoint and I should not see any data at this point. So let's try to run this. So I'm gonna run this template once again, just the way it is. And as you can see, I do not have any data. I got an empty data frame, which means it's working flawlessly. If I go to the checkpoint folder, here you can see we have the checkpoints, right? Which definitely makes sense. Now, what we're gonna do is we are gonna insert some new data and again gonna run the template. So I should see only the new data coming in, all right? So for this, I will run the Python file called ingest.py, which will insert some fake data into the table. As you can see, some data has been inserted. Now, I'm gonna run the Python template. Now it's only gonna pull the incremental data from the checkpoints. So now running it again. Checkpoint found resuming from 400. So as you can see, now the code uh, is resuming from the ID 400 and it's gonna now load the incremental data on the new data that was added. So now it's still running. So here you can see the max ID is next time 500, which makes sense because I have inserted 100 records, right? So now I guess it's still running. So I'm gonna wait. I should see the PySpark data frame. As you can see, all the new data set is coming in here. If I run it again, I should not see any data because I've already processed my data. As you can see, with this approach, you can pull data from any JDBC source and essentially the checkpoint ensures that you're only pulling new data. This approach is uh, great if you, uh, you know, if you have large tables, loading all the data set or scanning the entire tables could take a lot of time and resources. So using this approach, you can pull data incrementally. Thank you so much for watching. The complete deep guide is essentially posted on my LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn article where you will have all the code snippets, everything would be explained in a very nice way. And the source code is found on the GitHub section. With that being said, if you really enjoyed the video, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share the video with your coworkers. Thank you so much. Keep smiling, keep programming, and I'll see you in the next video.